Hi, so a few years ago I did a video about this. This is a uh, Ethernet protocol decoder I designed which basically takes 100 megabit Ethernet data, converts it to parallel so you can display it in real time on a scope or logic analyzer. And I've sold a few of these over the years but it's getting sort of fairly slow and it's getting a bit annoying to sort of make a small batch as and when I run out. So I thought well, let's just um, do a few mods to make this easy to make so I can just order these from JLC PCB. So this is the new version. The main change is it's entirely surface mount, don't have the hassle of setting up my pick and place machine and ordering all the parts and everything. So if you're familiar with this I'll just go through the differences. Um, there's a, I'll link a video down below which covered the original thing which covered a lot of the uh, a lot more of the details. So I'll just go through the differences and uh, also cover one or two things that have come up uh, sort of over the years from uh, queries. So as I said the primary motive which is to get this to all surface mount and obviously while I was at it I did a few uh, other mods and replace the dip switch with these larger switches for the uh, the functions make it a bit easier to uh, operate power is obviously now USB-C rather than um, the old uh, micro USB. Also I found having the, having the power on the side was actually a bit awkward because you've got your you know, you've got your Ethernet cables here, you've got your logic analyzer cables here and having coming something coming out this way was just a bit annoying so that's now on this so everything goes in line because this will normally be powered from the um, USB socket on the scope. Uh, another change is I've gone to colour LEDs which makes it I think a little bit easier to uh, to see what's going on so the error LED is now red and so each way each one's got its own colour whereas they're previously all white so I think that maybe makes it a little bit more uh, easy to uh, instantly see what's going on. I've also removed the active LED because that wasn't actually any use. Another minor change is um, as a result of a couple of queries it now passes all eight pins of the RJ45 from one connector to the next because um, some people are asking about that for PoE and in fact this is actually running PoE now. It's just running this uh, something I use in some of my installation. This takes Ethernet and generates 16 high speed UR-TOR WS2812 streams and so that's actually PoE powered as well. And the other minor thing is sort of just as a, a side effect of changing this connector is it's now tab up rather than tab down so they're a little bit more convenient to uh, take out. Now I'm sure some of you will say all oh, surface mount RJ45s they're going to break off and damage and so on so well yes I mean they're they're less strong than these but because this isn't like a big you're fixed to a big chunk of equipment if you pull the cable you know, it's just going to move the board it's not going to it's not going to tear the socket off but even if that does happen i've actually put a, um, a footprint on the pcb to take through hole rj45s and i've rooted the tracking around here such that if you did tear that off and rip all the tracks off the top it's actually all rooted to, on the bottom sides of these pads first so even if the, all these tracks got torn off you'd still be able to just stick through hole rj45 connector and that that would all still work similarly with the output um, pin header this does actually have the holes for a uh, through hold header as well if you uh, prefer that or if you want to maybe replace that with a right angle or something you can do that. Okay for those of you not familiar with this um, I'll just quickly run through the functionality there's some more detail in the first video which I'll link down below. Um, so basically this is taking our ethernet packet outputting parallel data that you can see along the top which then gets decoded into hex values that you can then look into and there's uh, um, some marker and trigger signals which are the green and uh, yellow. Even if you only want to trigger you can't actually do that on 100 meg ethernet. If you look at the actual uh, waveform of the scope it looks like this so you know you can't even tell when there's a packet on the line or not it's just complete noise because of the encoding which is uh, you know, why you need some extra hardware if you want to generate a trigger. So the uh, yellow is just a, a packet mark yeah this basically tells you when the where the packet is when it's active. So for example if I make this packet longer you can see that just covers the length of the packet. The green in this mode is a just a single clock per clock per byte. This can be useful for example if we're using a logic state analyzer you can actually get it to clock on each each byte. Also you can use that in combination with an nth edge burst trigger on a scope to actually trigger on a specific uh, byte within the packet you know say like the 16th byte or whatever. Now the common question is, well, you know, you can do all this stuff with Wireshark. Well, yes, you can, but what this gives you is give, give, you know, gives you the real-time display. Um, you can relate it to other signals in your system, and particularly for things like streaming data, you know, you can actually see the see the um, data in real time. So, for example, I can um, I just zoom in on our actual payload. Yeah, for example, I can. Uh, just see sort of one channel moving around I can adjust that channel value and again you basically you, know, you can see what's happening sort of immediately in real time 
a couple other features the um, the green channel which is the bite mark you can also make that help you find certain parts of the packet so this basically identifies a number of the standard fields on the Ethernet packet so for example here this first one this is the um, destination and source MAC address Ethernet type IP type this is UDP and then we've got our sort of destination and source IP addresses port numbers uh, the UDP length and then from here this is actually our UDP payload so this 02 is the first byte of our UDP packet it stays high for the whole duration of the payload and then at the end we have the, um, the CRC uh, another mode you can do is instead of decoding it you can actually make it just output a count this, again this can be useful for identifying certain areas in the packet and also uh, it's useful just to verify that the uh, logic analyzer is connected to the, to, yeah, to the correct bits it starts off from uh, zero for the first uh, byte of the packet, so that's just a handy way of um, knowing where you are. Now, one good example of where this comes in useful is when you're, look, you're debugging your Ethernet handling code and want to know, you know, performance-wise, are you pulling packets out quickly enough? So here, the orange trace is the chip select. This is running into a W5500, basically Ethernet, Ethernet sort of chip uh, device, which I find uh, quite useful. I use it a lot. But this orange trace is the chip select. So we've got a few. Um, select at the beginning which is just pulling in information out of the chip then the longer longer part is pulling the actual data out we can see here it's taking about three times as long to pull the um, packet out as the as the um, direction the incoming packet so yeah that tells us perhaps you know if we get a, a very f sort of fast on the packets we might potentially get getting into a an overrun situation the uh, the chip's got about 16k buffer so that's not normally an issue but we can also tell for example if you go to start looking at a longer packet Um, with this longer packet, we can see that the yeah this this header processing time is much much less of the overall proportion. So for longer packets, we're only taking maybe sort of twice the packet time to process it. But it means that you get this real time information of exactly what's going on, exactly when the packet's starting, finishing. Here's a concrete example of an actual bug that I found using this hardware. Um, I was using the W5500 Ethernet chip and instead of a 25 meg oscillator, crystal oscillator, I was using a MEMS oscillator. Now it turns out this had a little bit of jitter on the output. So what would happen is on for long packets, it would miss about 1% of the package. And you can see this happening here. We've got the, um, uh, the packet marker here and this is our chip select for our W5500 and you'll see every so often it skips and we can then use segmented memory to actually capture this and then play it back to see uh, what was actually happening and it turns out it was this jitter that was just causing this very occasional packet loss um, although UDP doesn't guarantee delivery the protocol that was being used, which is ARTNET, which is quite common in the lighting industry, is not particularly well designed. And there are situations where losing a packet can actually be a, a major problem. I won't go into details, but yeah, losing packets can actually cause quite significant issues with ARTNET. So if we now go through our, our captured segments, there, there's one missed packet there so we get a packet coming in and the, we're just not getting any interrupt or anything and so without this hardware you know you couldn't actually trigger easily trigger on this incoming packet so it would be quite difficult to know that you'd lost a packet and there's another one and obviously this tells us we you know we're losing single packets and obviously there might be other situations where perhaps you're, you're getting problems with certain types of packet you could then look at the actual packet content as well to um try and debug it but say so this is a, an actual um bug i found which would have actually been pretty difficult to have to have uh, discovered any other way uh, one question that comes up sometimes is well can you do this for gig, gig ethernet well the answer is well sort of the problem is that to paralyze the uh, gig ethernet you'll be outputting data at 125 megahertz so you know you need a fairly expensive scope or logic analyzer to actually deal with that and in practice quite a lot of the problems that you're going to use this de debugging would pretty much be the same at 101 gig so just you know running the link at 100 meg you know this will cover a lot of those use cases so i think i've actually had maybe one or possibly two series in from that so it wasn't really worth it to do it as a product um, if you want to find out more information 
the website for this product is etherdecode.com. There's links to some of the other videos, all the product information, and um, this is now available from stock to purchase.